Professor Beardington. Professor Beardington meets a milady. Humiliation ensues. Well, we should have expected that. We're dealing with the neckbeard here, you know? Finally, a place to share my experience with the truest of gentle sirs. Buckle up, kids, because this one will take a while, so if you need to freshen up or make a quick call, well, now's a great time to do just that. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Enter. OP, mid-twenties male, friends with everyone, at this time a lowly staffer on a political campaign. As it turns out, it's for the Romney campaign. Uh, keep in mind, this is a top post of all time from eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Geek bait, GB, a nerdy girl just out of college, bubbly, nice smile, super cute in her geekdom, you might even call her beard bait, BF, best friend from high school, Sigmund Freud, or Professor Beardington III, neckbeard know-it-all from high school. Set the scene. First, dear readers, you and I have to come to an understanding. For story purposes, I have to confess a sin. At the time, Geekbait and I were Republican staffers. Now, I never admit to this on Reddit for obvious reasons. I know many of you don't like Republicans, but that's okay. But for this story, however, it is a relevant detail. Well, I appreciate your candor, OP. So at least for now, you and I need to be friends, politics aside. Deal? Okay, deal. I think our politics are more similar than you imagined. <laughs> Sigmund Freud is euphoric. He had been since high school when I first met him. His neck beard, which is a lush, full beard, but also grossly unkempt, emerges at strange times, like in the middle of the summer. And then, like a whisper in the wind, it vanishes. Thank God for small miracles. <laughs> now, friends, there are many attributes of beardom, the trans fat diet, the absence of upper body strength, the thickened breath sucked in and out when a milady enters, the unfamiliar relationship with hygiene. You all know the symptoms quite well. Yes, indeed, beard on the inside. But to me, the crown jewel of the bearding life, the red flag that soars like a majestic eagle above all others is that smug, know-it-all attitude. And this was Freud, to a T. I've always wondered, are neckbeards products of their environment, or is their environment the product of the neckbeards? We are doing research, the science is still out. Personally, I do lean towards the former, but we've seen cases of the latter, so we can't say quite yet until all the data is collated. Freud, Professor Beardington, was the smuggest dude that you ever met. You see, normal people ask questions to help them understand the topic. Neckbeards, however, and especially Freud, ask questions to make themselves look smart. Freud loved to turn the Socratic method on teachers, who did tolerate it with some mild bemusement. He learned just enough about things on the internet to speak about them, oblivious to how completely silly he sounded. Part of me wants to advocate letting him know, but the other part of me doesn't want to give up this source of entertainment, so... <laughs> yeah, you keep doing you, I guess. Now, this was a small Catholic school in a small town, so we had a catechism class. Basically, Catholic ethics class. Professor Beardington III loved this class. His euphoria would swell like the universe after the Big Bang. He loved to ask those awful rhetorical questions. Um, so even if I lived a good life, but didn't believe in a magic book, I would burn in hell? Or, do you even know how many contradictions there are in the Bible? I, I have a feeling that you're going to tell me. He always had this poop-eating half-grin on his face when he did it. Like his morning visit to r slash atheism had just swollen his brain with so much science that he was now bestowing a great gift of intellect on we, the lowly plebeians. <sighs> Here's the rub. A lot of kids in the class came from, obviously, Catholic families. 
Their faith was very important to them. And surprise, they didn't like Freud pooping all over it. They also knew the worst kept secret in the school. Freud was a terrible student. And I will say that grades definitely aren't everything. But if you're trying to act like the intellectual superior to everybody around you, maybe, maybe start there. Ah. <laughs> uh. One day we were playing basketball in gym with a milady nearby that Freud had been creeping on. He holds the ball for a moment, looks inquisitively skyward and asks us, Ooh, what's my GPA again? <laughs> oh yeah, 3.8. My friend yells, So why'd you spend the last two summers in summer school? <laughs> <laughs> now, Milady didn't hear the GPA comment, but she sure as hell heard the summer school comment. Now, being a Catholic school, the stupid fundy administrators denied Freud his Dawkins granted right bestowed on all of neckbeardom to dress offensively unfashionably. In this school, we had uniforms. Freud was pudgy, not fat, and just wholly unathletic, so his uniform shirt was constantly untucked, and he always had crumbs of some unidentifiable beard sustenance on it. Maybe Cheetos? Maybe barbecue chips? Maybe the fossils of a Taco Bell Doritos Locos Taco from years ago. <laughs> Yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> Anyways. Freud's parents owned a successful Honda dealership in town, and they spoiled him. I don't know why they put this kid on such a pedestal. He literally didn't have any talent. <laughs> Had he been born an Inuit, the tribe would have pushed him out to sea on an iceberg years ago. <laughs> but in middle class America, oh boy. Freud was given everything that he ever wanted, along with the right to complain about how hard he had it, and the oppression of the fundies. Yeah, the sweet little nuns who ran our school. These women had more joy and goodwill in their little toenail than Freud had experienced in his entire life. Well, I think this is a lesson that Freud's gonna have to learn the hardest way. I never visited, but his neckbeard nest was said to be the stuff of legend. Expensive gaming computers and TVs, all inside of a large basement, all to himself. Freud was an only child, and maybe that explains the incessant helicopter parenting. I mean, yeah, he's a do-nothing kid, but he's still your kid. <laughs> I swear to get it. Uh, now, I'm a gregarious guy. My social orbit is like a comet. I happily buzz around the solar system from planet nerd to planet jock to planet emo to planet AP. So I was always at the very least friendly with Freud. One night there was a party. I do my usual pre-party ritual with my four good buddies. We grab a case of the crappiest beer and sit in the back of my friend's truck. Oh yeah. Little bit of pre-gaming, which doesn't make too much sense since I'm pretty sure the booze at the party's free. But you do you. <laughs> Our rule was no party until this case is empty. So we'd talk about who was going to be there, who'd try to hook up, you know, all that important high school stuff. High school is such a serious thing. These problems matter. My best friend was the anti-neckbeard. Popular, social, athletic, excellent grades. He's a successful lawyer now, and he hated Freud. Around beer four, I told him that I had screwed up royally and had mentioned this party to Freud. And his reaction was to just push me off the back of the truck. <laughs> Needs must, I guess. What can I say? I felt bad for this neckbeard, and I thought that some beer and a fun night might chill him out a little bit. No. <laughs> so, sure as shit, Freud shows up. My best friend's talking to some girl, a little hottie from the local public school. At this point, Freud has been wandering the room aimlessly, and get this, he walks the room with one hand behind his back. 
Oh, he's trying to look like a distinguished older gentleman, ironing patches onto the <laughs> elbows of his jackets. <laughs> now, no one is talking to Freud, so I do my social Mother Teresa routine and help the poor and the downtrodden. I ask him, what's with the hand behind the back? And he says, It's something that Southern gentlemen do when in the presence of a lady. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Freud has also tipped his hat, not a fedora, however, to ladies in accordance with his strict Southern etiquette. Is he actually Southern? I don't know what's happening. OP told it to him straight. He said, Freud, you're drinking Natty Light and wearing cargo shorts. <laughs> but Freud insisted that this is what gentlemen do. I thought maybe I could find him a leg beard to talk with and asked him if any of the girls there interested him. Freud had very beady eyes and he narrowed them at the hot chick that my best friend was chatting up. That one he says, with an undeserved confidence earned only through years of crappy, fawning parenting. That poor woman, she didn't know what was coming. <laughs> I tried to talk him down, but sometimes the train is just determined to wreck itself. So I backed off, had a beer, and watched as Freud slithered up to my bro and local hot girl. His body language was so weak and so pathetic that it made me cringe deep down. And ever since then, I've been super uptight about good posture. I don't know how Freud ever thought this was going to go well. <laughs> the level of delusion's unreal. He was just asking for pain, and pain was about to find him. I grabbed the foreign exchange kid from Taiwan who was hilarious and said, Oh man, watch this! I can't hear the conversation, but at some point I do hear a what the hell as I watch in slow-mo as hot girl throws her drink at Freud, which is probably the first liquid that Freud's shirt had ever seen. I don't know if that's supposed to be a burn, but I'm going to let it slide. What about his sweat? He seems like a sweaty guy. Whatever. <laughs> My best friend drags, drags Freud out of the room by his collar. Freud is struggling to get out of his shirt, and his pudgy white belly is flopping around like a dead fish. <laughs> Freud is about to die. His best friend was a star lacrosse player, and he is currently completely pissed. He throws Freud on the grass outside and gets ready to pummel him, but my other buddy and I stop him. We send him back inside, safe distance from his prey. Freud, what the hell did you do? Freud, not really understanding how close he had just come to death, is half sobbing and mutters something about dumb cheerleaders and stupid jocks. Funny, seeing that my best friend spent most of his academic life on the honor roll, unlike Freud. I didn't like him crapping on my boy, so I told Freud to get back home. Now. I still can't remember the exact thing he called me, but it was the equivalent of you moral, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> we definitely can't say that word. All right, Freud, well done. The basement is probably the best place for you. Safe travels. And you wish that was the end, but it's not. <laughs> Party's winding down. Five of us are playing cards in the kitchen and we get it out of best friend. Apparently, Freud had challenged my friend to a battle of intellect. His term, not mine. <laughs> Best friend says that Freud then tried to kiss this girl's hand or something, which I didn't see, but apparently he awkwardly grabbed at her hand and tried to hold it and pull it up to his lips. That is where the WTF and subsequent drink bath came from. <laughs> What a disaster of a human being. Is this real life? I never spoke to Freud again after that. He wore me down with his condescending BS and him attacking me right after I saved him from certain extinction was the last straw, which had summarily broken the camel's back. That is, until... Oh, 
We're gonna get a, a reuniting <laughs> with old Freud, Professor Beardington. But before we get into that, I did want to remind you guys to uh, like, comment, subscribe on the video if you haven't. Maybe share it around. I do appreciate that so much. So, flash forward <laughs> to a recent presidential campaign. Uh, relatively recent, I guess. <laughs> I lived in a swing state. And I worked in a state office for a certain former Massachusetts governor's run for president. Geekbait came to us from another state office. Now, I've seen many girls who are nines turn into threes because of a garbage personality. But Geekbait was a solid six who became an immediate nine with her bubbly, cheerful demeanor. Personality does go a long way for dudes and girls, that's true. Because she was friendly and loved by everyone, she was basically a neckbeard honeypot. <laughs> she was just attractive enough that neckbeards thought she was attainable. She was friendly to them, which of course the beards took as intense sexual interest in their bloated, pale, soft, hairy bodies. <laughs> At this time, I had a girlfriend of two years who is now my wife. This is my wife. No, but for real, congratulations, OP. I knew Geekbait from past campaigns, and we were great friends. She loved sports and sci-fi movies, just like I did. And we'd have these long, awesome conversations about the best sci-fi movies and how her Redskins would beat up on my Falcons. Heck yeah, sports ball, woo! <laughs> In the final couple weeks of the campaign, we were canvassing in my old hometown, so I told her she should go to a party that one of my friends was hosting. We were tired from knocking hundreds of doors that week, and some booze and some fun were just what we needed. Or so we thought. <laughs> I was having a blast, catching up with old friends, and everyone loves geek bait. I was excited because my girlfriend was coming in from grad school later that night, and I wanted her to meet everyone. Now... Any of you who work in politics know the cardinal rule, and I am an absolute tyrant about enforcing it. Politics and religion invoke very strong feelings in people. Talking about it is fine if you can be polite, but most people can't. <laughs> and especially they can't if there's a heavy amount of booze just lying around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is gonna get real ugly. This is a Thanksgiving special, isn't it? <laughs> I like being friends with people. And politics slash religion is poison to any good relationship. So, Republican or Democrat, I will change the subject the second you bring up anything political. It's a good strategy, honestly. Geekbait, also a political staffer, is of the same mind. A few friends asked me about how the campaign's going, and that's perfectly fine. They just wanted to know what my day-to-day -day was like and what I would be doing if we won. We didn't, and I have no idea what I'd be doing anyways. <laughs> you know how some girls can just sort of sense a creepy presence or eyes on them? As I'm talking, I got a shiver up my spine, one that makes you give a slight shake to clear it, and sure as hell. Ten feet away is Freud. Arm behind his freaking back again. <laughs> uh, does that help to make him more confident? Honestly, maybe he doesn't need help in the confidence department. He does seem pretty confident, but I'm 90% sure that that's just a mask. He's overcompensating for something. Well, at this point, I have been identified by Freud. There's no escape. Our eyes made contact. Freud had not changed even a little bit. Still lived at home. Still had poor hygiene. Still had the smug sense of a man who knows everything. Exacerbated by reading lots of blogs on the internet. Ugh. Where do I start with this? <laughs> uh, at the top, I guess. I got all day is fine. Freud had occasionally attended a junior college a couple towns over, but decided to, quote, focus on his writing. Yeah, how's that going? <laughs> I think to ask why not work at his parents' dealership, but 
From the way he talked about his parents, very derogatorily, that made me think that I should just forget it. And to be honest, I didn't really care anyhow. <laughs> I could not be more bored with this conversation. I visualize his words just bouncing off of my face. He's not talking with me, he's talking at me. F me, what a bore. How has this man-child not matured a single day since high school? And he was an immature brat even back then. Suspended adolescence is real, bro. It's really for real. <laughs> because this was my turf and Geekbait was from Virginia, I was her social anchor for this party. She'd drift around and meet new people, but would usually end up talking back with whatever group I was with. So naturally, she approaches. Uh-oh. Mentally, I tried to wave her off. If I had any ESP, now would be a really good time for it to kick in. Too late. She's closed in on me and Freud, and I don't think that I can protect her. I have panicked visuals of Professor Beardington tugging on her hand or some other weird crap that I'd have to explain the next morning. Now, here's the thing about Geekbait. She got into the campaign the same way that many young staffers do. She had some rich donor parents. She went to an elite prep school for girls outside DC and then a storied New England liberal arts college. Her parents might have helped her get internships on campaigns, but she turned it into a no BS staffer job with some real responsibility behind it. Two weeks before this, she had single-handedly planned an event with thousands of people. That includes secret service coordination, national press, everything, down to the food and the porta johns And how much does she get paid for making these politicians look good? You know what? Never mind. So we're not going to talk about religion and politics. You're right, OP. <laughs> that bubbly energy of geek baits would turn into electric focus when she had work to do. Freud spots her, and he looks like a wolf about to pounce. The look in his eyes is pure predator. This milady was his. And I got some warning bells shooting off in my head, of course. I am super uncomfortable, but I lack the social ingenuity to gracefully keep Freud away from this poor girl. So Geekbait introduces herself cheerfully and asks Freud how he knows me. That started a word salad odyssey worthy of Homer. <laughs> I'm not sure how Freud managed to breathe in between all that yapping and amazingly, despite all those words, he never really even answered her question. <laughs> Again, he's just here to hear himself talk. I am standing there, horrified, I'm ready to interrupt, but Geekbait is classy, and she's dealt with stuff like this before. Like I said, she's Geekbait. She knows how to handle social awkwardness and excessive beardery. Does she have some media training or something like that? <laughs> That's the only way I can get through this with a straight face. Needless to say, the conversation turns to the campaign. Freud starts some incoherent rant about how the Republicans hate women and then actually apologizes to Geekbait for the possibility that her birth control might be taken away. That's right. He told a female Republican staffer that Republicans want to take away her birth control. A decade later, I guess we see how that one went. <laughs> this is a level of inappropriate that defies gravity. I'm done trying to stop this train wreck. I just kind of have to see where it goes. <laughs> what did he expect her to say? Oh, thank you, my liege, for rescuing my birth control from those evil wizards. <laughs> wizards? What possible benefit is there in mentioning birth control at all? Much less healthcare policy at a party where everyone's supposed to just be having a good time. Now there's an addendum to the cardinal rule, and that is the more passionate you are about a policy or religious tenant or controversial subject, the less you know about it. You see, passion and knowledge are an inverse relationship. 
Yeah, it's that Dunning-Kruger kind of thing where you only really learn how little you know. <laughs> because when you actually take the time to learn where the other side is coming from, Republican and Democrat doesn't really matter. It's harder to create this fiction about the other guys being evil villains who hate the poor, Republicans, or socialist tyrants who hate America, Democrats. <laughs> but as political people, as both Geek Bait and I understood, we create narratives that people understand. We create heroes and villains, and then we try to make our guy the hero and the other guy the villain. We are in the BS business because stupid people like Freud have an appetite for said BS. You're buying? Okay, guess we're selling. Yeah, however you have to <laughs> package it to help yourself sleep at night. And of course, Freud is the perfect example for why stuff like this works. Like many neckbeards, he buries himself in a fictional world of media and gaming where there are heroes and miladies to save and evil forces to defeat. This is part of the reason why neckbeards have such strong opinions about political topics. Political pros feed them a narrative that syncs perfectly with their fairy tale worldview. It gives naive beardos like Freud the opportunity to make themselves the hero and white knight for the fair milady. In this case, his heroic defense of Geek Bait's birth control. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bold play, let's see if it works out for him, Cotton. Anything that undercuts the narrative that Freud ravenously consumes on the internet is a threat to the egotistical Narnia that he has built around himself. Honestly, it's only gotten stronger over time. I don't think it's just neckbeards doing this at this point. But that's uh, another video, I guess. Freud's magnum opus of a rant crescendos with some incoherent point about how Republicans want to put women back in the kitchen. He looked at Geekbait with such pride in himself, defending all the miladies from such villainy. He's still happily oblivious that he was dealing with an actual expert, someone who knew our political platform inside and out. It was like the kid who got cut from Little League lecturing A-Rod on how to hit a curveball. Just supremely narcissistic and completely pathetic. <laughs> That's what we're here for. That is a good cringe. So Geekbait is just kind of bored with it all. Her and I both know people like this. They get their news from the internet, usually some very weird source that's super speculative and not too well informed. You see this kind of stuff on Facebook all the time right before they try to sell you the black ant powder. Have you tried it? It'll reverse your aging, you, you'll go through puberty again. It's like a miracle supplement. <laughs> I swear, for reals. And of course, these uninformed people are convinced that their speculative view is in fact hard reality. They become swollen with the invincibility of their own expertise. I cannot tell you how many ultra-conservative aunts and uncles I've had to patiently explain reality to, so it's not just Freud here. It happens on both sides. Geekbait not only knows her stuff, she was dating the super smart dude who worked on the campaign's healthcare policy at one point, so she was about to break the cardinal rule, which is to immediately change the subject when idiots like this want to talk politics with you. Honestly, I think Freud's birth control rant was a little too much. <laughs> Even for Geekbait. We've been fighting on this campaign for a while and I don't know. I think it just got to her. Her eyes narrow and she asked, So why did birth control use increase and get cheaper during the six years Republicans controlled the House, Senate, and Presidency? Which is true. And the basic reasoning is that more people started using it and pharmaceutical companies found ways to make it cheaper. It honestly, didn't really have anything to do with Republicans or Democrats. <laughs> but hell, I had seen this before from Freud's teachers. Freud is a neckbeard through and through, and he therefore has some ironclad convictions about basically everything. 
challenge him and you challenge everything that he has built up about and around himself. He's not athletic, he's not popular, he's definitely not charming, but he has somehow convinced himself that he is an intellectual giant slayer. Geekbait's single question struck a painful blow that would be answered in kind. He launches into what I can only describe as a rant worthy of electroshock therapy. I mean, just some really rude stuff. Geekbait is lying, she's an idiot, she's a corporate tool, and Geekbait is actually bored with all of this. In politics, you deal with people like these all the time. All answers, no questions, talking their way through a twisting maze of some light facts which they've gleaned from the internet, blended with a heavy amount of untrue bullcrap regurgitated as fast as possible, all of this in no discernible order. <laughs> See, to us, politics was just a job. We had our beliefs, of course, but we worked quietly to achieve those ends by voting each election and doing these campaigns. Democrat Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill had a famous relationship with Republican Ronald Reagan. They were enemies during the day, but great friends by night. That was politics to both Geekbeard and I. Just another day job. Good friends and a happy family were what was most important. I guess I can see it. The job seems evil and soul-sucking, but you gotta put bread on the table somehow, I guess. <laughs> to neckbeards like Freud, though, political views are his life. His entire self-worth is tied up in being an intellectual. Burst that balloon, and you basically demolish his entire existence. And that is why he reacted so aggressively. Doesn't matter though. At this point, I've had enough of this crap. It validates the cardinal rule. Never talk politics. It only makes you mean and stupid. In the middle of his rant, I take Geekbait by the arm. We both just turn our backs and walk away. <laughs> yeah, block him IRL. Freud is humiliated twice now. He does not like being ignored. But smart thing to do would just be to pack it in, call it a night, just like that party back in high school. Is that what he does? No, of course it's not. <laughs> he mutters after her, You fascist dog! Such angst for a spoiled upper middle class white kid, and who talks like that anyway? Bourgeois beard? <laughs> I think this is all referencing bourgeois beard. I think it came out a little louder than he intended. In your parents' basement, you don't really have to worry about volume control. So, damn, damn, damn. This guy is such a friggin' awful neckbeard. His beardery so grotesque and out of control that now he has infected me with the virus. I now have to white knight for geek bait. I mean, I am a nice guy, not a nice guy TM, but I cannot let that go. She's my guest and you don't mess with my guests, especially one as sweet as Geekbait. So I turned around, looked him dead in the eye and said, leave now. He knows instantly that he screwed up, but he doesn't want yet a third round of humiliation. My friend chimes in, she works on the campaign, stupid. So does OP. Freud's face reddens, I mean like red dens. Tears well up in his eyes as he is now the center of the party's attention. <laughs> uh, oh man, formative memory incoming. <laughs> this is the social A-bomb that we all fear. None of us wants to be in his shoes. I'm about to escort him out the door like my best friend did years ago, but Professor Beardington III collects the remainder of his dignity and finally turns to leave. But of course, not before Little Geekbait, the sweet, friendly, proper product of finishing school and a renowned college, punches Freud square in the jaw. She did not slap. She did not push. She punched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Seems to me like he was sort of turning to leave already. Is that a sucker punch? <laughs> 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 
Freud took it like a bitch and ran out the door. Some scattered applause followed him out. I am staring with my mouth open and Geekbait shrugs and says, let's go get another beer. <laughs> OP, uh, Geekbait? Yeah? I cannot believe you just did that. This town is full of people who have wanted to do that for years. <laughs> Geekbait just smiles. OP, I'm not gonna lie. I am totally hot for you right now. Okay, weird, <laughs> really fast. <laughs> uh, you have a crush on her, don't you, OP? It's okay, you can just say that. OP tries to deflect. He says, I said it jokingly, but man, seeing her emasculate Professor Beardington makes me think that there was an awful lot of truth to it. A doy. <laughs> Geekbait said, thanks for sticking up for me and gave me a light kiss on the cheek. This is what I mean when I talk about her personality, taking her from a six to a nine. Nice. But screw me, who was standing up for who exactly here? When my girlfriend showed up, I had Geekbait tell the story to her. I wanted to hear her perceptions of what had happened and her impersonation of Professor Beardington. She was understated. Oh, he was very unpleasant. <laughs> and completely left out the punch. <laughs> <laughs> understated is the way to be, sometimes. I tried to stay understated in the story. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know. Thanks. Neckbeards like Freud do this for a reason. They are not confident. They are not social. But they want what confident and social people have. They try to patch the holes left from not being wanted or desired with video games or movies or junk food. I will never crap on the neckbeard for playing a game like Warcraft because I understand what that gives them. If they play it enough, then they build a character that is wanted and desired. They get to experience what it's like for people to want something from them and honestly, they'll probably never get that out of real life. Shame on us if we try to humiliate them for wanting to be wanted and important to others because we all have that in us. God, you've cut me to the quick there, OP. Yeah. This entire YouTube channel stands as a testament to that, honestly. Beautifully said. So I sympathize with beards like Freud because this does have to be a really lonely existence. But they do also deserve some of what they get. The neckbeard's disconnect from reality is the rotten apple that spoils the whole bushel. They attack jocks even though going to the gym would help build their self-confidence and attractiveness. They attack fundies, even though spiritually, not necessarily faith, but like spiritual nourishment and acknowledgement would help to heal the emptiness that they have inside. I agree with both of those things. Neckbeards also tend to attack the well-to-do as corporate stooges. Deep down, maybe even unbeknownst to themselves, they also crave that success. The constant self-deception, fed by an endless supply of fiction, video games and stories, creates an awful human being that is so bad that they make people around them bad too. How else can you describe sweet little geek bait punching a dude? Or perennial nice guy me incited to get violent with people like Freud? I don't think you were actually getting violent, OP. I thought you were <laughs> leading him towards the door. That's it. There's a little bit of Reddit humble bragging in this tale, but uh, I'm gonna let all that slide because overall, I did enjoy it quite thoroughly. It gives us some really good insight into how a political lapdog copes with day-to-day -day life. <laughs> the LDR, neckbeards aren't a product of their environment. Their environment is a product of neckbeards. I still think it's the inverse of that, but we will agree to disagree. I hope you like, comment, subscribe on the video, follow me on all the things. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye.